Hey guys, it's Maddie and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be talking about some binge eating recovery and the steps I want to take to overcome my binge eating and to get in a better mindset around food and my relationship with food. I'm going to make a separate video on my experience with binge eating and my story and how it has come to fruition, but I think that'll be quite a long video and I want to do it justice. So I'm going to sit down and like write it all out and then film that video at a later date. But I want to get this video up now to hold myself accountable on these next steps and changes in my life. So this is just going to be kind of like my game plan for my binge eating recovery because I've never take I've tried to recover before and I've tried to move on from it before in the past. Um, I haven't been super successful, but that was more I was trying to restrict myself from the binge eating instead of actually addressing the root cause of it and the actual issues um, and like fix not fix myself, but do the work on myself instead of just blaming the food around me. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into my action plan for binge eating recovery. So the first thing that I have made myself aware of and have gained knowledge about is the hunger scale. Um, when I think of hunger and being hungry, I think of it as black and white. You're either full or you're hungry, but there is actually quite a bit of middle ground and that's where we spend most of our time throughout the day is that middle ground between being full and hungry. So um, a lot of the hunger skills you can find online are from a 1 to a 10. 1 being you are starving, you're ravenous, you will eat everything in sight, you're feeling lightheaded, lightheaded you're dizzy, you are just starving. And 10 being painfully full where you feel sick and are literally about to burst at the seams. And then five being neutral, you feel neither full nor super hungry. And then obviously there's a few other numbers in between there being hungry and full, but you can look online if you are interested in that middle ground. But that is the first thing that I wanted to become aware of is that I don't need to have my stomach growling, feel super lightheaded, be so hangry in order to eat. I can find other cues that I might be hungry, um, whether I don't, I don't know what those other cues are right now because I don't necessarily get hunger cues except for the stomach growling and head being a little dizzy. Um, I'm trying to figure out my hunger cues and what those are and I don't need to stuff myself until I'm feeling sick in order to stop eating either. So ideally I would like to eat before I get into what I call my red zone and that's when I'm probably about a one or a two on the hunger scale where I will usually like come home from being out somewhere and all I can think about is eating and I don't have the patience to make something so I will go raid the cupboard, raid the counter, the fridge just to find a quick fix and then that kind of triggers something and I'm like oh I got food so now I need to eat all of the food which is like a primal part in our brain because we think we were being starved. So now when food is an option, we take advantage of that and eat and eat and eat and eat. And that's exactly what I do. And I don't listen to my body and stop when I'm full. I just eat until I feel satiated. And then usually within like five to 10 minutes after that, I feel so sick because I have stuffed myself. And usually not with super nutritious foods. It's usually like the granola bars, some chips, some chocolate, just random things I can find that will give me that quick dopamine hit. That being said, I want to be more aware of the nutrient, nutri nutritional value of the food I'm eating and how it will make me feel later. Because when I get hungry or when I go on my binges, I don't think about my future self. I just think about me right now. What do I want right now? What can I get right now? What is available to me right now? And I don't think how I'm going to feel so sick in like 15 minutes and that my stomach is going to hurt. I'm probably going to feel like I have a headache and just feel very sluggish and tired. And that's not a fun feeling. That's not an enjoyable feeling. So I want to be aware of like my proteins that I'm getting, the carbs, um, some fruit and veggies, the sugars that I'm also consuming and not be so like restrictive on like no cookie or no that, but just 
this moves into my next point, just being more balanced. I don't love that word or that phrase, but just making sure I'm getting my proteins in, getting my carbs in, eating some vegetables, and also having that cookie or also having that granola bar or that brownie or some ice cream, but making sure that I'm hitting some of my nutritional goals, if you will, first, and then kind of supplementing, like adding those sweets, those treats afterwards. I'm trying to eat more meat because I find that I tend to binge when I don't eat a lot of meat. So I'm trying to eat it at all three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, having some sort of meat source in each of those meals. Because then I find that it like satisfies a craving a little more than if I don't have a meat in my meal. So I'm trying to eat more meat and protein. Um, and yeah, but also knowing I can have that cookie because that does add some benefits to your diet, like a little energy boost or something. But just making sure I'm eating those vegetables. Like there are some days I could go a whole day without eating a single veggie. Not proud of it, but it is true. Some of my binging comes from like a scarcity mindset. So knowing that there is always more and not feeling like I need to like hoard the food and eat all of it now because once it's out, that's all that's done, then I'm never gonna have it again. I always have the opportunity to get more if I would like it and the option is there. I don't need to stuff it all in right now. So for example, a lot like around Christmas time, there's a lot of like seasonal treats like gingerbread cookies. I love gingerbread cookies and I just made a batch um, the other day. And part of me is like, well, I need to eat all of it now. Like I need to eat all of these gingerbread cookies. I need to enjoy them while they're here. I need to just have them and make sure I get some, make sure I get enough and how many I want. But there is nothing from there's nothing stopping me from making them again or making them in the middle of the summer if I want a gingerbread cookie. So just knowing that there is always more and I don't need to eat it all now and that once it's gone, there can be more. Also just reminding myself that I am choosing to eat this food. If I want to eat six gingerbread cookies, I can, but I just have to know that I'm making that choice and not feeling driven to eat those and like it's a necessity to eat those. Just reminding myself, I am becoming aware of it. I am choosing to eat all six of these cookies. It might not be the best decision to eat them all. It may make me feel like shit later, but I am making the decision to eat this. There is, and like becoming a, um, a part of the decision to eat the cookies, not letting something else take over and shoveling them into my mouth. I also, I heard this quote, I forget what it was exactly, but someone said something along the lines of not testing yourself. So having all of these chocolates out on display, that is testing yourself. I don't want to have to test myself. So this is also me avoiding one of my trigger zones, which is the kitchen, because in my family, um, I haven't really opened up about binge eating to my family members, but I don't think anyone else in my family struggles with it. So we have a lot of chocolate and sweets out on the counter and I don't want to test myself by spending so much time in the kitchen being surrounded by it and seeing it everywhere. So I'm also going to avoid my trigger zone, the kitchen, by just not spending as much time in there. Just not forcing myself to sit in the uncomfortableness that is the kitchen and being surrounded by all of these sweet treats and these like trigger foods for myself. And that's kind of like a punishment if I force myself to sit there and stare at it all and just be like, wow, wish I could have that or oh, it's like taunting me. Just not even going there. Just don't go in the kitchen really. Like, not that I'm avoiding it altogether. Obviously, I go in there to eat and to get food, but just not spending unnecessary time in there. And my last thing that I am going to start practicing is being more mindful when I'm eating and being present in the moment while I'm eating my food and to be able to thoroughly enjoy it, not distracting myself by scrolling social media or having TV on in the background, just literally sitting there eating my food and being so aware of everything that I'm eating and just enjoying it while it's there. Cause that's another thing I don't like when food runs out. So I keep eating and eating, but then I'm not paying attention to what I'm eating. So then all of a sudden it's gone and I'm like, wow, I didn't even get to enjoy that because 
I was sitting there scrolling on YouTube shorts. Obviously everything has its time and place, but I just want to be more present while I'm eating so that I can actually enjoy what I'm eating and not just go through the act of chewing and swallowing while distracting myself with something else. Anyways, that is it for this video. I am posting this to hold myself accountable and to maybe help someone else through binge eating, especially around the holiday times. I know it can be a little bit tricky and um, tough waters to navigate, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found maybe something helpful or just enjoyed listening to me go on about how I want to recover from binge eating. But I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.